All right, the last spot here is uh, at the the big 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 man spot. I actually had a few um, names that I tossed out here, uh, and I was like, it's actually this was an easy one. There's a lot of centers that are quite disappointing. <laughs> that was something that I looked at. You know, the stats. I was like, you know, um, some of the names that I looked at, like Mitchell Robinson, and that's like the third Nick now that I mentioned. You know, it's like yeah. you know this kid. Can he do anything more than what he actually does? Um, uh, obviously, uh, Isaiah Stewart in Detroit. Um, it's probably a similar case to like Trey Mann. Last season, he finished off really hot, obviously, and it was sort of like, you know, can these, you know, they will, you know, they, he started most of the season when he was been playing. Uh, you know, can he give him sort of 15 and 10? But he's probably like a 12 and 6 guy. You know, that's the thing. You know, it's like, that's 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 somewhat disappointing. Um, I even looked at like Boban. I was like, you know, I'd, I'd like to see Boban a bit more. It's disappointing we don't see him that much. It's almost like Jay Kidd's fault, right? It's like, you know, why aren't you playing him more? But, you know, it, it is what it is. But the player I came up with is a player that a few seasons ago, okay, was playing in Portland, okay, and we were talking about, is this guy like a franchise cornerstone or is this a, a, is this a cornerstone of this franchise in Portland that's going to take Portland to a title, okay? And at that point, he was sort of starting uh, at some games. He was the sixth man in other games. He was sort of even that conversation of sixth man of the year for a, a, a period, okay? And now he's like averaging six and five and two assists and sort of buried on this San Antonio team. I'm talking about Zach Collins. Okay, you know, he was, I was high on Zach Collins, okay, when Portland was making that um, conference final, okay, and he was sort of, you know, they were like the team to be, and this, is, this team's trending upwards, okay, you know, Lillard was Dame time every second game, all right, and Zach Collins was a big part of that conversation. It almost feels like Portland has um, blown up these two sort of generations of, of, of um, quality core teams. You know, obviously, if you go back even further to Aldridge and you know, Batum and, and, you know, Wes Matthews, they blew that up. Okay, then they had this other group here, and it just hasn't come to fruition. And I think uh, Zach Collins, you know, look, you know, this kid now, he's played four seasons. He's only 24, okay? But, um, you know, he's now like, you know, it, to me, he's been a bit of a disappointment. He's got um, he's got chronic foot issues, doesn't he? Isn't that a recurring injury for him, lower legs or something? He just can't stay healthy, right? That's one part. But he's he's also that the impact is gone. The impact is gone. You know. Yeah, but like, like if he's got lower leg injuries, he's going to lose a step. I think, I think injuries are fine for the disappointment, um, because you have that expectation. I mean, the Portland teams you referenced as well really just cursed of injuries and that front office didn't hold on as long as other front offices typically do in the situations. They really did blow it up a lot quicker. Right, you know, like the Brandon Roy situation doesn't work along with Greg Oden, so they just transition into the Dame Lillard era. And then there's lots of things that do or don't go right in that era as well. Um, you know, and if and they and they parted ways with CJ McCollum finally. So, you know, they'll probably be back to contention in five years and then won't do anything and we'll be talking about him again in 10, not doing anything. Um, my center, I'm glad that we had a really different list. It's good. We I don't think we lined up any. Uh, I've went with uh, an Orlando Magic person just to just to give you some some praise. I've went with Mr. Mo Bumba. I was I was high on him, and you were high like on him. You were you were like all star potential. I'd like to hear more. <laughs> he's a big man. He's a big man, and you know he's got some skills. So you'd figure they would translate. Now, look, I'm going to read out some stats this year, and then like there's a couple of encouraging ones. So for example, his free throw percentage is 20 percent better than when he entered the league from four years ago. Um, his field goal percentage has been really consistent at about 5.5, sorry, like 55%. Um, his rebounding's up now to eight. Uh, his assists, he averages about one. He's getting almost two blocks a game. He's only averaging about 2.6 fouls, which is good. And he's averaging 10.6 points. So why would he be on my disappointing list? Well, this is his fourth season in an NBA system. Not that he got heaps of playing time before, but he's done the training regime. He's done the, you know, the dieting and the and the fitness and that. He's had the opportunity now to become a professional athlete in this league. And he was buried on the bench and not getting a lot of time. And he was producing eight and six when he was getting 15 minutes. And now he's producing 10 and eight with 26 minutes. So essentially he's on the court for an extra 10 minutes per game, but the productivity in those extra 10 minutes is borderline non-existent. And again, there are touches available on the Orlando Magic. There are things that he could be doing on the Orlando Magic to have success and have impact. And, you know, that's a team that clearly needs a center and could build around a young center. And he's not probably it. And it's disappointing. And it's disappointing as well when you get a rap song about you right before entering the league and you don't even live up to that. So, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, I just, I just brought up your stats. Um... 
you know, they what? just don't pop off the page. Two hundred and twenty-four games to have that. Uh, look, it's a good, it's a good one. Yeah, obviously, you knew I was going to get fired up because he's an Orlando player, right? And uh, uh, Mo Bamba has been a disappointment since the season he was drafted. <laughs> Okay, that's right. that's the that's the that to me is how uh, unfortunately I've seen his career play out. Um, I think I can't remember who was drafted after him. It's, it's really slipping my mind now. Who 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 is who else was in that class that came what year after? Uh, uh, but but there were some picks that obviously have sort of flourished now over you know four seasons, and Mo Bamba sort of really just has done nothing over four seasons. Uh, even now that we obviously got then traded last season, I think for Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, I think Wendell Carter is probably a, a keeper for us for now. Okay, and play. Uh, and I think the question for us now is: Do we give Bamba some money to keep him, or ultimately just let him let him walk? I think I think he's unrestricted as well, isn't he? Um, at the end of the season, so I know, would think as much. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, um, so that means I guess we didn't pick up that extension on him. Okay, which is not shocking because um, I think there's been a consensus disappointment that he hasn't put up the stats we had hoped or developed into the player we had hoped he would become. Um, and he has his moments. Don't get me wrong, you know, he has his moments, uh, but, you know, he's probably going to go somewhere else and maybe flourish. <laughs> go to Detroit, maybe, maybe. <laughs> or something, okay? But, uh, uh, yeah. but, but it feels like it's not going to happen at Orlando, uh, and, just, and that's probably the situation there. Just as a fun fact, looking at the 2018-2019 draft and players picked after Mo Bamba, um, quite a deep draft, really, in hindsight. A lot of these players in the top 30 achieved four years, and even in the second round, those players as well. Very quick list. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr., literally right after Colin Sexton, Mikhail Bridges, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Miles Bridges, Michael Porter Jr., Bonnie Walker the fourth, Dante DiVincenzo, Kevin Herter, Grayson Allen, so uh, clearly, Aaron Holiday. Clearly, clearly, Mark, so clearly Michael Porter Jr. is probably one of the biggest names that stand out there that, you know, I know he had back issues. Um, and SGA, obviously, as well, you know, so I think... SGA. Mikhail, you wonder if he had his own team, would he be a different sort of player? You know, he's a great Swiss Army knife for Phoenix currently, but, you know, does he get 15, 20 points because he's just more of the central point? And guess um, what? We're going to get another centre this draft. <laughs> 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 well, you got to, you know what? Maybe the Lakers, now that they're uh, out of playoff contention, they'll somehow get a first pick and New Orleans will be like, you keep it for some reason because the league's... Because LeBron wants one more shot. Who knows? 